Outrocast. Right, so the first question that I have is, is it Naomi or Naomi? Because I don't want to get, you know, the wrong impression here. So it's actually Naomi, like a horse. Um, I used to be teased for that a little bit, but yeah, it's Naomi. Got it. In, in Japan, like they say the name differently, so you never know how to pronounce it. But now I know how to pronounce it correctly. And <laughs> is your day going well so far? Yeah, it's going really well. I actually just finished up classes and I've just been relaxing a little bit. So it's been going really well. So you're associated with multiple cities and locations. Are you the kind of person that you have to be in a specific studio to be able to work? Or can you do it anyway? So for me personally, I haven't actually had my own studio ever. So I've pretty much been doing all of my paintings and drawings wherever I have space. So when I was back in Philly, actually, before the pandemic began, I would just have everything spread out across the living room floor. And my roommate, <laughs> thankfully she was okay with the mess, but everything's just all over the place. And now I've actually moved to Long Island. So it's, you know, there's a little bit more space, but everything is still constantly a mess, which I know my roommate doesn't always appreciate, but <laughs> it's all over. Got it. I ask all that because some people that you speak to that are full-time artists treat it like a day job where they say, well, from nine to five, I am going to be doing my art, even if there's bad art that comes out of it. And other people you encounter, they need to feel inspired. They need to know that there's a project or a deadline. Which one are you? I think I'm a little bit of A and a little bit of B in the sense that once I graduate school, I hope to do art full time and that's kind of the plan right now. So I would be doing it nine to five. Of course, it's always nice when you have a little bit of inspiration that you can work off of. But I think the most important thing for me is to be doing art every day and to be doing a lot of it. So even if you have something that isn't the best, you're still learning from it and growing from it and you're trying new things out. So that's been how I approach it at least. Cool. An interesting thing to me about your art isn't just that it's great art, it's that a lot of it comes commissioned through social media, meaning somebody sees your work and goes, I like that, can you make me one of those? When did you realize that that was an option and actually a possibility for your art career? So I actually, I didn't realize it until this past year. And before that, I hadn't done a lot of artwork whatsoever, even not for commissions. So when I finally got back into doing art again, people began reaching out to me through DM or just by knowing someone, like it would be hung up in someone's house. Someone would go there and they'd see it and ask who did it. So it's kind of like this little network that I've been able to build and grow from. Mm -hmm. which I hadn't anticipated whatsoever because for me, it was just a hobby. And then when I realized that there was more to it and how much I enjoyed it, that's when I started trying to market myself a little bit more and utilize the different platforms because they are so beneficial once you, you know, just get started on them. You are, in my words, my worldview, very educated, uh, <laughs> very academic, have you had a lot of people from class or school try and talk you out of art in a way by going, hey, what are you doing with your life? Oh my gosh, all, all of the time. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a bit crazy because where I go to school, it is so academically oriented that it is difficult for people to see, I guess, a more creative approach to things. So I've had people try to dissuade me from doing art full time. And I've had people saying, you're crazy. Why would you give up all of these lucrative careers in finance or consulting or just these very corporate jobs that I personally don't see myself in full time, which has been very difficult trying to, trying to convince people that. Um, and I think mm -hmm. once I realized that I'm not going to convince everybody to see my point of view, there's been a lot more freedom and I'm able to proudly say, okay, I'm going to be an artist and I don't need your approval with that. So that's been my <laughs> take on it. Yeah, I think that that's going to happen with any kind of a creative path or even sports really, that people are gonna go, you're not blank enough. 
uh, you could never make it. And you just kind of have to prove them wrong by doing. And you already know that. But are you able to apply any of your education into art? Or is it totally A and B different everything? So if you would have asked me again a year ago, I would have said, no, it's completely separate. Like they, they don't go hand in hand whatsoever. Yeah. But after spending more time doing it, you realize that there are so many business com components that are in art that you wouldn't typically think of. You know, the marketing, learning how to value your artwork, learning how to, you know, present yourself and network with people and speak highly of yourself and grow that confidence. It's a lot that I've taken from the business world and I've been able to apply. And I hope that in the future, whether I open up my own art gallery or just have an exhibit, anything dealing with customers, it's all business oriented. So I'm so grateful for the fact that I already have that exposure before I'm a full-time artist. I feel like it's definitely beneficial. Interesting. Well, I could answer this if it had to do with musicians or actors. Can't I have no bearing on your world right there other than going, that's great art. I don't like that art. I don't get it. That kind of thing. <laughs> Is one of your goals in your career to have representation or is it just preferred to do your own thing have your own path and be your own leader really ideally I think that I would want representation but I would want to I would I guess I wouldn't want to pigeonhole myself into one specific style or one specific area so I think finding the balance between that representation while still having the flexibility to be as creative as I want, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I think that that's a sweet spot. And I don't know how rare that is, but um, I think that if I found someone who would be able to represent me and would be able to have those two things, I think that that balance would be perfect. Now, the work of yours that was really surprising to me from a couple of days ago, the portrait that somebody commissioned of Nature Boy Buddy Landell, how long does something like that take you? Well, um, I think it really depends on, I guess, the specific person. And it, I guess it just varies from painting to painting. Mm -hmm. But I think that took me about 15 hours, which isn't, isn't too bad at all. Um, at least for me, I, I know I spent anywhere from one hour on a painting to like, maybe like 40 to 50 on some. So I know that some people spend even longer, which is insane, but yeah, it wasn't too bad. 15 hours, break that down for me. That's not just you 15 hours straight, right? That's a couple of sessions and you knew how to break <laughs> yeah. down the process. Well, I, I, once I graduate, I keep on saying once I graduate because obviously I haven't graduated yet, but I think that in the future that would probably take two days because I'm doing it from the time I wake up until I'm done for the day. So um, I hope that that would only take a couple days, but because I am kind of balancing right now, school and also this and you know everything else that's going on in my life, I'd say it took about a week, um, maybe two to three hours every day or so. That's kind of what I aim for right now. When you're painting, can you do anything else or have any noise going on when you're painting? Yeah, so um, I, I think it's kind of funny because my roommate will say right now that with school, I can't have any background noise when I'm studying whatsoever. But with painting, I love listening to audiobooks or just YouTubers that you don't have to pay attention to or music just to have some background noise. And, you know, I've gone through a few good books this way, so <laughs> I've really been enjoying it. And then... When it comes to inspiration, I asked that before, if you need to, to feel inspired to paint or anything like that. Let's just say, because I know you love everything you do. You love every commission that's ever come your way, of course. But if you're <laughs> less interested in something that you have to paint, is it harder to do? I think when I am commissioned to do something that I don't necessarily want to do, it's not that I don't enjoy it as much. It's that I guess the reason why I wouldn't, in, well, some of the reasons why I haven't enjoyed commissions as much in the past is because it'll feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over again, which can become a little bit monotonous. 
So I think it's harder to get started, but once I'm actually painting and I get into the group of things, it kind of, you know, it, it's almost easier to do because I already know the routine of how to do it. While when I'm trying something new that I might be more excited about, it's a lot of trial and error. So it's almost more pressure because I don't know exactly where it's going to go. So doing something that I've done before or that I'm not as excited about has its pros and cons, but I think it, it is pretty easy to get through it, which is obviously nice. And do your art skills also translate to graphic design or is it really, they can be, but you just want to be painting and that's that? Yeah, so recently I actually, I, I took a stab at digital art and I spent um, about a month or two just playing around with it and trying to try all the different facets of it and see if I enjoyed it. And I, I, I was all, almost ready to start applying to jobs with graphic designing and digital illustration. And I just realized that while I enjoy doing it, it just wasn't the same as having a paintbrush and a canvas or a piece of paper and really getting in there and getting messy and being able to put all of my ideas down on paper. So I have tried it and I have so much respect for people that do it because it's very difficult, but I just didn't think it was for me. Hmm. And what was the exact moment where you realized I am going to be a painter? Wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think it's been, it's been a long time in the, in the making for me to actually say that out loud. I think the, the, the moment that I really realized that was actually just a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was doing an interview, my first ever interview, which it's so crazy because talking about, you know, talking to someone else, interviewing someone else, it's like, okay, that's great. But having someone interview you, it's insane. Mm -hmm. And I said for the first time to all of my peers that I was going to be doing art full time. And it hit me that I had just said in an article that I was doing art full time. So it's a little bit like, okay, well, now that I said that and I put it out there, I can't really retract that without, <laughs> you know, like without everyone knowing. So it was terrifying for me to say that, but I just knew that I had to. And that was, I think that was really the moment when I was like, wow, so this is, this is actually happening and it's terrifying, but I'm so excited. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't be the first successful artist out of Penn because John Legend is one of the, the famous alumnuses, alumni, alumni right? <laughs> you're, you're the academic here. Alumni is the plural of alumnus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any other key names from Penn that uh, I'm missing right now that you yeah. needed? Um, I believe, oh my gosh, I hope I don't get her name wrong. I believe it's Whitney... Cummings I could oh. I believe that's it she's the comedian she went to Penn and she's hysterical yeah. um I know that I know there are a few more but I when I found out that she went to Penn I was blown away <laughs> but yeah you know we have we have a few a few really interesting people who have gone there exactly so two last questions for you and they have nothing to do with your art unless you want to make them about you which you can do and the first one is what TV show should we be watching if we need, we, the royal we, need a new show to start watching? Oh my gosh. Well, I've been watching the show Good Girls. I don't know if you've heard about it, but a new yeah. season just came out on Netflix. Yeah. It's hilarious. Um, I would highly recommend that. <laughs> and yeah, I finished Bridgerton. I enjoyed that as well. I'm not sure if you've seen that, but both of those are great shows. I definitely recommend Yes, uh, to show you that I know about good girls, I know about Dorito, but uh, you know, I hope I didn't <laughs> spoil anything for anyone right there. But <laughs> the closing question, any last words for the kids? Yeah, so I guess, at least for me, what I realize a little bit of advice that I have, um, if someone's you know, deciding whether they should try something crazy and follow their passions or do what everyone's telling them and they're at a little bit of a roadblock, I would definitely say to follow your passions as cliche as that sounds. It's like I said, it's so scary. And obviously there are a lot of unknown variables, but I think in the end, 
everything will just work itself out with time. And you just have to believe that and go in with that confidence. And hopefully, I mean, I'm hoping that that's what will happen to me and it'll work out. But I think that that's the biggest piece of advice I've learned in the past year. And the best way that somebody can reach you if they may want to commission some work? Yeah, so I actually have a website. It's just naomirosenbloom.com. Um, and you can find my contact information over there or just send me a message on Instagram, which is, again, just Naomi Rosenbloom. So just message me there and I would love to do any commissions. Well, there you go. You gave all the right answers. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And it was great speaking with you as well. Outro cast.